Never miss this if you go to Japan. Now, if you think about Japanese culture, you might think about anime, the food, nature, but you should never miss out on Japanese comedy. I know you might think Japanese comedy is a little sus, a little bit weird after seeing some of the memes on the internet, but I personally used to laugh my oshiri off as a kid in Japan, so here are five reasons you should never miss out on Japanese comedy if you go to Japan. Number one, never miss Japanese TV show comedy. So comedy is called Owarai in Japan and a lot of the TV shows start with physical comedy using your body as a punchline. The OG TV show you might have seen is Takeshi's Castle where people got run over by boulders, people got smacked around, they didn't mess around in that show. Slip and Slide is also popular for some reason they like to they have to climb up a stair to try to find a treasure or something. Jumping into cold or hot water is also a popular game show activity. Also they like biting into household object to see if it's real or if it's a sweet cake. Sometimes they overdo it, but most of the time it's pretty funny, so check it out if you go to Japan and have a TV on hand. Number two, never miss Japanese prank shows. Pranks in Japan are called dokiri, which means to be surprised, and they go pretty intricate. It's pretty intricate. One of the famous ones is when someone is sleeping, they get tied down to the bed, and then they get slingshot out of the house while they wake up. It's pretty popular, you might have seen it. Another popular one is pranking people in offices by dressing up in a dinosaur suit and chasing after them. So if you just imagine your normal day at the office and you just see the real intensity of the pretty well-made dinosaur chasing you is what makes it funny because obviously people know that dinosaurs are extinct but the pure confusion on the people's faces when this decently well-animated dinosaur chases after you, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty funny. They also like the classic otoshiana which is like a fallen hole or like a hidden hole that people will walk in or just fall into. And with this I would have to say, you know, in typical Typically, it could be decently funny if someone's walking just casually and falls into a hole, but it's not gonna be hilarious. So, what Japanese comedy likes to do is put some intricate layers on top of that to make it so that, yeah, at the end of the day, someone's gonna fall in, but there's gonna be reasons, there's gonna be some background on why they fell in, which makes it funny. For example, one of the TV shows used the Attack on Titan theme in which one guy dressed up as a Titan and wanted to go through all the walls like a tank on Titan and encouraging students like a metaphor to pass all the exams like the Titan is passing through the walls. Already kind of confusing. So in the beginning he screams fight through your exams like me fighting through these walls breaking these walls and he starts running through the walls but eventually at the end there's a hole in the ground for no reason that he didn't know of and he completely falls into the ground. He has no clue what just happened because he thought it was a more of an encouraging TV show. So he's on the ground like what the what the so just happened and the camera captures that. And those kind of just random thoughts that whoever made these TV shows come up with makes it to me kind of funny. They also like repetitive pranks where they prank the same person multiple times a day to just make their life a living hell. Just, just Terrible. Like this one time, a female actor or talent goes up this little hill thinking she's gonna go to a shrine, you know, maybe pray to the Shinto gods, Amaterasu, but then a big boulder comes down, but just a huge boulder comes down and she could already tell, oh my god, this, 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 this prank again. And while she runs down, she first falls into a Otoshiana and then the boulder falls on top of her, which, you know, it's already kind of funny. But you might be thinking that was kind of predictable, you know, it was already kind of man made. Yeah, it's a decent prank, you know, but it was. Not the best one, but however, when she thinks the camera's off, she's trying to relax, got, got some water, and sits back on the chair. The chair breaks down from the back of the leg and she falls into another Otoshiana. So you think it's over, but it's not. One time they did it like 10 times in one day to one comedian. They kind of want to test out how many pranks they could do in one day sometimes. One thing I would have to mention is that most of these pranks are to gaining, which is like uh, comedians or like actresses, basically like public figures. So they wouldn't necessarily, in general, do it to the general public. So if you go to Japan, you don't have to be worried if there's holes on the ground. You don't have to be worried if there's gonna be dinosaurs chasing you. Typically, because sometimes 
They like to prank gaijin or foreigners. Not to be mean to them, but just, just the fact that Japanese culture is kind of weird already and showing that side is kind of funny. So, you know, be wary of that. I'm just, but mo in general, you'll be fine. Number three, never miss the classic Rakugo, the origin of Japanese comedy. Rakugo literally translates into full language or basically punchline in Japanese and it's been around for centuries. And the Rakugo ga or the person who says the Rakugo stories will wear this nice kimono and will sit on this little cushion thing called zabuton in a big theater. It's typically held in a decently sized theater where everyone would sit and watch this one person tell a story. And it's typically a funny story. This one is definitely harder to understand if you can't understand Japanese or speak Japanese to a decently advanced level. This is because it's essentially just speaking. It's not much physical comedy. It's a little bit like acting because you would act like one. Dakugo Ka would act like he's one person to keep a dialogue on. But in general, it's just speaking, talking about a funny story. But going watching the actual theater of Rakugo and feeling the history behind it will definitely feel like a time-bending experience and realize that Japanese comedy isn't just about physical comedy or just pranks. It could also be an intricate verbal comedy and a little bit of thinking. Th thinking comes along with it. And another aspect is that a lot of these popular Rakugo stories has been passed down through multiple generations. And it could even go back to Edo period, which was a few hundred years ago. So you can literally be listening and laughing to the stories that people in Edo period laughed at. Maybe some samurais laughed at the same jokes that you just listened to during the Rakugo story. But more than just jokes and the funny stories, they also contain interesting plot lines and meaning or themes behind it. As well as the fact that you could kind of get a sense through the dialogue that the people during those Edo periods spoke and how they spoke to each other and you could feel this again like a weird feeling of living through history. You could kind of get a sense of how the people during the samurai, the feudal system days talked and went, went along about their days you know. I actually as a kid loved Rakugo and went to a lot of theaters and always instead of listening to music in the car I put a CD of Rakugo and just listened to it so many times and I memorized a couple popular stories that's how much I liked Rakugo. But essentially to get the full experience of Rakugo, understanding the language will be a necessity. So I have a skill share on intro to Japanese, hiragana, which is the writing system, as well as the basic grammar Japanese if you want to check it out in the link in the description below. And you can learn it with me, Matsuma, and I'll answer any questions you have so that you can get a full experience. Also follow me on TikTok and Instagram if you want to get to know me better. Number four, never miss manzai or the two-man combo comedy. I think this originated from Rakugo, but manzai is the more modern style of storytelling comedy. So it's basically a stand-up comedy, but it's with two people involved. They have this old-time looking microphone and they tell jokes and stories along with it. And it might be a fictional story, or it might be the stories that they went through through their lives. They act it out a little bit more directly with Lakugo because they're standing and they kind of speak more directly to the audience and it's a lot shorter. Typically the style is one guy is the boke or the stupid guy or the one that acts stupidly to make a joke. And another guy is Tsukomi or the straight straight man who kind of smacks him in the face and says, Hey, you're being silly. The main importance of Manzai is the punchline and it's the speed to it. When the bokeh makes a joke, the Tsukomi has to, has to hit that hit that joke saying how hey why that doesn't make any sense which makes it funny you know it clarifying something as silly makes things funny if you watch Gintama you will know that Shinpachi was known as a stand-up guy and then Gin-san and Kagura was kind of like the bokeh because they were kind of making jokes all the time and Shinpachi had to smack them around so imagine that in a more of stand-up comedy way and it might make a little bit more sense. Manzai is so popular in Japan that they have this championship called M1 Grand Prix and it's actually annually held and the best Manzai combo wins it all and people like to watch it. It's pretty funny and again, this is, you know, you gotta understand Japanese a little bit so definitely try your best and watch it and see if you understand it. If you've already been studying Japanese, watch it and see if it's funny or you're just like, what the frick the are they talking about? Number five, follow Owarai Gaining because they're really popular in Japan and it's interesting to see how they develop. So Owarai, like I said before, is like to laugh or comedy and Gaining comes from Ge, which means to act or entertain and Nin, which means a person. 
And I would say gaining or these comedians are much more of a bigger deal and there's a lot more of them than like America. I know there's obviously popular stand-up comedians, but there is gaining or on TV all the time and they do all the way from stand-up comedy to TV shows to game shows and prank shows. So they kind of become like a local, not a local, but the global celebrity in Japan. Some of the biggest names are like Shimura Ken, who unfortunately passed away a couple years ago, but he was really in instrumental in pushing the Japanese comedy forward. Bito Takeshi, who made the Takeshi's Castle, you know, and he also made Battle Royale, which is a scary movie. He kind of makes scary movies too, so you, you, you see how much of the impact comedians could have. They can make their TV, funny TV shows, and they can make some brutal shows like Battle Royale out of nowhere. I don't know why he made it, but you know, comedians, if you can make someone laugh, maybe they have a little darker side of them. I don't know. And couple manzai combi would be like Sandoichiman is more modern, popular, and downtown, downtown, which is also fun, funny with their TV shows like Gaki no Tsukai. Um, they have one of the TV shows in which every beginning of New Year they go to this place, which is like set up to be really funny, and whenever they laugh, they get hit with a stick on their on their on their on their oshiri, which. I know it doesn't sound necessarily funny, but it, it is funny. So essentially, these gainings become like a TV influencers, and once they have a pretty good traction, typically they do get popularized from stand-up comedy through manzai, but once they do get traction, they do get on so many TV shows, and get to a point where they can make Battle Royale and other kind of movies. So it's interesting to see, especially because all these gaining weren't popular in the beginning, and watching these small gainings get popularly popular is something that it's kind of interesting when you watch TV shows. I think personally, TV shows shows are a lot better in Japan and American TV I haven't watched American TV in like years but Japanese TV shows are still pretty funny to me so I, I, my mother my grandmother would say hey it's a little bit uh, a little bit childish the pranks are a little bit childish is it, is it that funny to see someone jump into hot water is it that funny to see someone fall into a hole three times in one day and to me I would have to say it's funny I also like Rakugo and Manzai I think all of it is pretty funny but all in all you can see because of the popularities from these comedians how essentially a huge part comedy is in Japanese culture so if you go to Japan you don't want to miss it you don't want to miss it most of the anime's comedy is also influenced by Japanese comedy so you don't want to miss it you want to understand it but obviously learning Japanese language will help you understand some of it but some of it you could just kind of laugh you don't have to understand it. subscribe to join the Nakama leave a like to support the channel and peace